it's the next level. Excuse me. Ofta, you snuck up on me there. If you're looking for the cookies, we don't put them out till three. I can hardly wait. Uh, do you happen to know where the Midwest Soybean Society is meeting? Sure do, Muscalange Banquet Room. You looking for your mom? She in for the convention? Hey, could I get some change? Oh, sure, I'll just look in my purse. Only a nickel and a couple of dimes. Oh, you are in luck, mister. You know, some say the best luck is to die at the right time. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we're covering the Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 7, Oga for Oga. And that's Swedish, but I don't know if I came across as saying it right. <laughs> oh, it's as close as I would have been. <laughs> yeah. Oga for Oga. But yeah, the synopsis for this episode would be, after five travels to 1982 to carry out his new mission, the siblings face a flurry of difficult decisions. Meanwhile, Carl issues a warning to Vanya. And yeah, it it's I, I love the whole nineteen eighty two time travel mm-hmm. and what he had to do within it. And to me, oh it was so vicious. Oh it was. It was so vicious. It was. This uh, this whole episode was really, really great as far as just the action in the, the action, beginning. Yeah, the action in the beginning, this flurry of activity that we have, and then just all the character. We got a lot of character stuff in this one. We got a lot of not – some of it's setting up definitely for the next episode, which I'm hopefully going to be able to watch as soon as we get done recording because, man, that the ending <laughs> of this one. But I'm sure we'll get to that when we get into our top fives. Oh, definitely. And we should get there right now. I wonder if it's too late to be unadopted so what's your number five? So just we started talking about it already, but that whole opening sequence that was just crazy. And uh, <laughs> what what was the deal with the, the fudge nutter candy bar that he was trying to get? I, I didn't – was that – I don't re- – is that a callback to season one? Did he – was he – I don't remember that from anything. Was he eating those or – I just don't remember and it just <laughs> – and it was great just the way Aiden Gallagher plays Angry Killer was really, really good. And it, it took me – I watched this episode three times, and it took me a couple of times going, going to myself, wait a minute. How did, he get to, how did he get to such a precise location and date? And then I realized it had to be the handler had to have that, sent him there. Yes, yeah, using, because he, he doesn't really have, like, true control over his power if you yeah, think about exactly, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so so he's – he's. Uh, yeah, I love how the woman, when she tackles him, she's she's ranting about the vending machine when she, there's yep. this room full of dead bodies, you know, and then <laughs> uh, the two waitresses that open the door and they look inside and they just – they don't say a word. They just close the doors again. <laughs> and it's just like one of those crazy things that I'm like, there's – a room full of dead bodies. There's a kid there holding a hatchet or a mallet, whatever he had when the woman, I think he had the hatchet when she tackled him yep. and she's raising about the vending. You're going to pay for that vending machine. machine. Like, um. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what about? Yeah. So, so just that whole was, was, was wild. It was all wacky and wild, but the action, and I just love the effects in it and how he's able to, mm-hmm. the way he was like teleporting or, or going and swifting through time within that scene Reminded me of, like, Nightcrawler in the X-Men and mm-hmm. just bamfing through everything and going from point to point yeah. and just attacking them. Yeah. It was amazing. It was. And I'll lead into that, into my number five, which is the same thing, you know, you know, five vicious delivery to Fishbowl Head or AJ <laughs> and everyone at that conference in 1982, you know. I just love the delivery of the kills in the scene. It, it was definitely extremely vicious. I think this was a lot of blood in this particular scene itself. Yeah. But five means of getting what he needed due to his deal with the handler, you know, mm-hmm. which 
was to get rid of the board and hand over AJ to the handler. Yeah. And it's pretty funny how he hands her, <laughs> you know, AJ and he's in a bag, like, in a, you know, kind of like when you get a goldfish at a, <laughs> right, <laughs> at a at pet the, shop. At, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. And then she just pours him into a bowl. I think I've got that in my notes that you can and still, he's still like yeah, complaining. You can you know, still hear his, still complaining. Yeah. Brr, you brr, can brr. hear his voice. I'll do, I'll do this to you and blah, blah, blah. Cause the, I had the closed <laughs> captioning on so I could see that yep. actually what he was saying. So same here. Very it was cool. funny though. The fact that, you know, you get yelled at and you get what, you know, talked back by a <laughs> small fish that yeah. you could just easily just, Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. My number four is Ben and Klaus. The conversation they have before Ben possesses him. I thought it was it was really cool. We get a closer look at, at kind of their relationship, and uh, I just loved it. It made me laugh every time that every time Klaus kind of shut his eyes, Ben would get a little bit closer to yeah. him until he was finally like right there in front of his his face. And uh, but you know they had that, that this real heart to heart about. Someone they had who, to. Yeah, yeah, and and they. It was really touching, a touching scene that that Klaus finally kind of understood, Ben. You know, who has fallen in love with this woman, and he can't mm-hmm. be with her, and so he's expressing his feelings. And I, I just thought it was it was really great. It was very, like I said, very touching scene and really really cool. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you're number four. Well, that yeah, you know, it leads into what you're saying. Ben is finally able to get into mm-hmm. Klaus's body and use it for what he needs to to talk to Jill, who he likes. And, you know, getting to be, you know, be with the girl that he wanted to be with, even though it was in Klaus's body. Mm-hmm. You know, the terms of Ben going into his body were way too funny, you yeah. know. No cutting of the hair. <laughs> no looky look down below <laughs> yeah. because he's shy. Yeah. And, of course, he is dairy free. So, yeah, you don't want that to happen on a first date, obviously, <laughs> yeah. with her. And I just love the battle between Klaus, though, towards the end, mm-hmm. between Ben and Klaus, and to fight over that body. It was so funny to watch, you know, because you, you, all you see is through Luther and Five's eyes going, what is going on? Right. And even Diego, they're like, what is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. I thought that whole was... possession thing is something that we needed, and we needed to know exactly where Ben was, you know, gonna go within the group itself. Yeah, how are they gonna? You know, it, it's always been that thing where Klaus has always been hiding Ben mm-hmm. that he could talk to Ben, but he brings it up every so often. Yeah, but not as often as you would want, so that the other siblings could actually, you know figure out yes ben is around us and klaus is that vessel yeah well and that's that's even worse is that you know diego gets kidnapped before he can tell anybody else i assume i mean unless that's gonna be something that is gonna be another one of those things that happened off screen that like luther is gonna go well diego told me that ben is actually here or something like that you know he got swifted away by the by lila before he's able to tell anybody so that's Mm. uh it's gonna be an interesting situation when uh, when they all get back together Mm. And your number three? My number three is just Carl and, you know, how menacing he was in this episode. He, that actor, I don't, I didn't jot his name down. I probably should. But he was really, really good. This quiet kind of menace that he puts behind everything he says. And then, of course, that ending with, with his brother stopping Vanya and Sissy. And it was, it was interesting because I had to watch it two or three times. I did, I mean, I had to, like, back it up a couple times to understand exactly what was going on is that Vanya hits Jerry, the brother-in-law, with the door and kind of uses her power to push him off the road. Then yeah. she uses her power against the other two deputies or police officers, whatever they are. And But she forgets that Jerry is off to the side mm-hmm. and and he hits her with the shotgun and so you know because she hesitates because sissy yelled or something like that and it was just one of those things it was just it was interesting that she didn't realize that jerry was over there and so he was able to to kind of get the drop on her and, and hit her with the shotgun so yeah that was an intense scene though just to see that because you have sissy and harlan in the car yeah and then on top of that it, it's kind of confrontational and I think this is like the first time that Sissy has seen Vanya oh. use her abilities. Really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She had no idea. Remember, and I think 
Harlan may have a little bit of an inkling that there's something there, even yes. though he wasn't alive when she got him out of the water. But they, she, he definitely held her hand when that window cracked. So there may. It's like he knew something deep down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, kind of like when we saw that thing and uh, that whole little sparkly thing going through him when right. she revived him back then. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting so to see knew. how that turns out. So my number three would be Luther and Diego's research to find Olga Faroga. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't look into whether it was Swedish saying or a person's name. This had me rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> it just means – Eye for an eye in Swedish, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought they they immediately jumped to it being a name, and I'm like looking at what's on the floor, and I'm going that that like it doesn't even look like a name. You like it was just it, I just couldn't. It, it floored me, and it, I guess we got to kind of put it in the, the department of this uh, suspension of disbelief. Well, they weren't as as educated as five was. No, no, from, right? No, no. From I, Argos, you know? I get I get that, but I'm just saying that it was one of those things that. That it's you kind of got to suspend your disbelief a little bit that there just happened to be a woman in the in the phone book with <laughs> that, that name, yeah, yeah, with that exact name of how they were pronouncing it, even though it's spelled completely different on the floor in blood. You know, they didn't. Like, it just it, it. They're they're just they're so dense. Both of them, I guess, is what we're supposed to understand. And, well, he's the big gorilla, and the other one's the crazy. Yeah killer yeah. you know yeah he's and, just... and it's funny how five has to clear them up for you know about yeah. it it's like yeah. yeah it means eye for an eye <laughs> in, <laughs> guys in, hello yeah. and they're like oh and, and diego's just like sorry wrong number or, or something like that yeah you know? yeah <laughs> uh but it is interesting too it brings up an interesting point that they really uh bonded quite well with elliot to have that much of of a reaction to his oh, death, yeah. you know, in just a short amount of time, they had really bonded with this guy to the point where they were so intent on killing uh, his killer. So I think they were very accepting of who Elliot was because he was different than anybody else mm -hmm. in this world that you would see. Right. He was a strange person. Come on. But he was very accepting of them as well. Yeah. And all their differences and their powers. Because at one point we spoke about this before where when five just leaves, he's just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. He finally figures it out. And just, yeah. So very cool. So that brings us to my number two. Yes. So we already talked a little bit about uh, the handler putting AJ in the, in the fishbowl and we hearing him ranting. But I, I did think that was an interesting scene there when the handler makes Lila the head of security and she's showing her those different, uh, you know, fashion kind of uniforms at what she wants the, the security people to wear. And, but then, you know, Lila kidnaps Diego and she calls him her boyfriend. And which is awesome. Yeah. yeah it was, it, we finally got that confirmation. Yeah. And we also see here that, that history is, um, you know, unless something's going to, something more is going to happen that we've definitely changed history at this point. Because how are how is the group going to come back together to be this kind of superhero force that's fighting for the United States government? You know, is that still going to happen? Have we have we changed so much with? I fives? think it has changed because uh, if it would have happened, it would have happened earlier. You would think you would think that they would have to have time to hone their powers to Correct. to, to yeah. get, reunite, to get back together, have the government kind of recruit them, and then you know, however it was done originally. So it's it's it's, it's sad on one hand that we may be missing that storyline, but it's not really. We didn't need. We didn't necessarily have to have it. It just kind of would have been nice to see how in this original 1960s before five came back how they got together as a team. it would have been cool to see as an alternate reality mm -hmm. if they extended the episode but yeah i don't think that we're gonna get that at all no no unfortunately i don't think so so that was your number two right? that was my number two right brings us to your number two my number two would be allison and ray you know she tells ray that she has to go and talk with luther about leaving you know mm -hmm. And, and but interrupted by the Swedes at the same time, Vanya is trying to get Harlan and Sissy and go with her. But Carl shows up at the last minute, and we already talked about some of this. Ray gets in the corkscrew uh, on one of the Swedes' legs, though during that altercation with Allison and Ray. Right. And but then Allison rumors the other brother to kill his brother, the last one. I guess you know because we lost one brother. There's only two left. Right. And 
you know, the frantic feeling during the scenes were hard to deal with because I knew that they would be able to, you know, they wouldn't be able to make the time. They can't make it to get to five. Yeah. And to Diego and to Luther. It's only the seventh episode. And there's going to be more coming. But yeah. what do we do after this? It's like, it's like okay, uh, that got thrown out there. Right. Right, and I had a little bit of this in my uh, – um, Ray and, and Allison kind of in my notes a little bit is this whole – this this fight. Uh, it was heartbreaking, you know, when she says – I love when he's leaving to go meet with Robert Kennedy's people and yep. and he she says, I love you, and he just kind of taps the door frame and, and leaves. But then later when he comes back and that fight is going on, you can see – that there's for sure, you know, when, when they're having that conversation and, and she says, I can rumor you to make you forget. And he says, no, I don't want to forget this year that we had together. I thought that Correct. was, I thought that was really, really sweet. That was sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To For him to say, okay, I realize, you know, I, I accept the fact that you have these powers. I accept the fact that you're from the future. And now I accept the fact that you've got to go back. I don't want to, to lose that memory of you though so i thought that was exactly. that was really really great and very touching oh definitely you know it, it's something that was needed a little bit of heart in there yeah and you can see some of that heart between you know vanya and sissy and harlan mm -hmm. yeah too. so that that was what was needed except for you know five throwing a tantrum and throwing that <laughs> suitcase <laughs> yeah the... which that leads right into my number one which is this this whole missing the window to supposedly go back to yeah. 2019 you know it's diego misses it because lila kidnaps him yep allison misses it because she's having this fight with the swedes vanya misses it because the the cops inter intervene but they were all trying to bring somebody with them and i have this later in my notes as well to kind of talk about this kind of a theme that i see forming in this in this season but i i want to mention something before i I forget it about this this missing this window to go to 2019. There was a part of me that thought that when when Klaus threw up Ben that he was going to actually physically be there, like be corporeal again, but apparently not because Luther and no. Diego, Luther and Five did not see him there. But then I started thinking, and the third time I watched it, I started thinking, I wonder if that briefcase was really going to take them back to 2019 or if it was going to do something different because the handler mm -hmm. did say she had a plan for five and that he was going to be the patsy for her taking over of the commission. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that briefcase was going to send them like to the commission or, you know, somewhere else to where it, the security people or something would know that, that they were the ones who did it. You know, it, it's just speculation. We may never mm. find out, but it's, uh, it, it'd be interesting to me if we, if we do see where that, what that briefcase would have actually done if they had used it. And yeah, I thought, that's a, yeah, that's a good pull for the fact that who knows, maybe she put explosives in there and maybe it was yeah. meant to, when they get wherever they, that time that she wanted five to be at, you right. know, the other siblings were there. It right. could have just destroyed whatever was there. Maybe it wasn't, them. you know, maybe it wasn't going to put them back to where they could write the, the destruction in 2019. Maybe it was going to put them right back where they were with the moon exploding. Who knows? Correct. Yeah. Uh, but I did think, again, it was one of those things that, that, that came to me kind of on that third watch is that, you know, five throws the briefcase in the air because he knows it's an area effect and you can't, You've got to make sure you're out of the area of that, whatever that time field is. So I thought that was kind of cool that he threw it up in the air. And we get that effect of seeing the briefcase and that, that kind of time thing, time vortex or whatever open up. So, Yeah, my part, my number one, well, parts of my number one, we have already spoke about Diego brought to the handler by Lila. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously Lila saying, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then Vanya's barricade on the road all... You know, all this is winding down to a stop, you know, the kids to getting back to where they needed to be. And I just love the control of Vanya with her powers at that point, too, mm -hmm. because you saw a bit of control within it. Mm -hmm. But it, it scares Sissy and causes Carl to stop her. And then, uh, of course, you know, Five tosses that bag into the portal, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, you know, the, it's... You know, all these things that lead to that end. So where are they are? Where are they now? What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. How are they going to get back to where they need to be? 
how are they going to fix this situation with the Swedes? Because the Swedes, uh, well, one Swede is still yeah, after them. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember. Did he run out of the, the room or out of the house? Or He must have, right? He must have yeah. run, run out after he killed his, his brother. And so we'll, we'll have to find out what he does uh, now that he's killed his own brother. So Yeah. All right. So we've got some notes here before we get into to quotes. Why don't you start with yours that we didn't talk about? Uh, I find it funny, though, that taxidermy that was in 1982 that Five sees when he goes to the Mid Midwestern Conference. Yeah. <laughs> that was just so weird because apparently that was the mainstay back then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and it's just like, but it, it's him focusing in on it. It's like, what was there to focus? Is that something we have to really, I look for Easter eggs yeah. on occasion going, was that something really important? <laughs> yeah, maybe it was an Easter egg for the comics or something. Like, I know that I, I read... I think in the IMDb trivia, when he says something about we didn't have to fight a sea monster, that there is a comic arc or a co or, or huh. an order of the comics where they did fight a sea monster. So that oh, that cool. may be something there. We talked about uh, some of mine, but uh, I it it threw me it took me out of the episode a little bit every time because I kept trying to figure out how Five got his clothes so clean because I understood he could wash the blood off of his hands and off of his face. But he had it was all over his jacket. It was all over his yeah, shirt. Yeah, it was all over the place. <laughs> and and suddenly he goes into the bathroom and he comes out and everything's perfectly fine. There's no no splotches or anything hmm. on his on. Good I'm like, catch. did he have another uniform in there? I highly doubt uh, it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I, it doesn't. It just didn't make any sense to me. It, it really it really bugged me bothered me every time I watched the episode. So Maybe they'll put out a Blu-ray and he'll have deleted scenes <laughs> where he goes into the future or some other thing and he goes to a laundromat and he has to sit there for a moment and then go back to the <laughs> I hadn't even time. thought about that. I guess he could have <laughs> he, he could have transported. Yeah, he could have used the, the seconds or minutes time travel and then went back. That's, that's possible, I guess. But Yeah, but that's a back to the future thing or a Ted, yeah, you know, yeah. Bill and Ted thing. Yeah, it seems <laughs> a little... It's like, oh, when I do this, I'll go do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little, <laughs> a little unlikely. Uh, I have to add on to that, though, you know, the attack on the candy machine. It's so funny about five when we go back to it. And I just laugh at it for the fact that he has so much pent up frustration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. just like I, I it's something it, it's it looked like a spoiled child that had to have what he wanted. Mm -hmm. But he's got the anger and vigor of like an old man. Yeah. It's like, I need this. Yeah. Give it to me now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other point I would have would be the 77 minutes that. Five tells Luther and Diego about getting everything together. Mm -hmm. He makes them use watches and sync them. Yeah. But that is a huge time crunch, especially with even with Vanya and Allison. Yeah. And the mix, as well as Klaus, and he's dealing with that whole thing with Ben and Ben wanting to get with that, that girl. Well, so. exactly, exactly, because the other thing is – just right with that is how how close are they they I, I don't understand they're all in the same city but gosh Vanya's like out in the country somewhere yeah exactly. so she's got to be you know she can't be real close Allison's in a house in one part of town Klaus has got a, a house a mansion in a whole nother part of town yet he's able to walk to the alley where where they you know that's when he's having that fight you mentioned with with Ben that he's running from his mansion and he makes it, he almost, he does make it actually to the yeah. alleyway. So, you know, how close are things in this, in this, uh, this city? So, uh, anyway, not a big deal, but just one of those. And it was another thing that kind of bugged me about the episode was, was that, like you said, the timing was really tight. It was very tight. The other one I thought, and I didn't catch it until the third watch, I, I, I thought was, was kind of funny, was Five telling Diego that he's the Patsy when actually it's Five who's going to be. <laughs> the, the patsy for the handler i thought that was that is true i thought that was interesting when they were talking the whole thing about that he was calling he's telling diego that he's like oswald and and this and that when it's actually five is yeah one other thing that i have would be diego asking ben and klaus's body the one thing that diego can know <laughs> is luther's nest dad's underwear <laughs> yeah. and i thought that was funny you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah and it was so nice to see because Diego knew because it was something that him and Ben only knew and it was so true and then he was just like loving it a yeah. nice reunion with Ben and Diego yeah now yeah. one similar actually one sibling actually knows about 
then. Yeah. Which is amazing. So. Exactly. Exactly. I thought it was funny that, that Jill had had sex with, with Klaus and Kichi, the, the Russian guy with the glasses, in the sex swing a week or so before this when she's talking to Ben and Ben tells her that he's a he's a virgin. You know, I just – I and she's like, wait, didn't, we just had sex with – we had a three-way in this sex swing and did all these positions and stuff. And he's like, oh, oh, yeah. I guess that was been one of those moments when Ben – Closed his eyes or, or went away. Or he was not even there watching. He, he yeah. was outside, probably watching everybody else farm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just love the the little montage with Ben and Klaus's body. It's like he he is feeling life for the first time, experiencing smell, mm-hmm. feel, and the earth. And obviously, he doesn't like oranges. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I, I I saw that in in the night when I watched it the last time. I saw, oh yeah, he does spit out the orange or grapefruit or yeah, whatever. It was, like, <laughs> it was a huge orange too, I and mean, it was like yeah. gigan- gigantic. So, well, it, it's a cool thing for the fact that you know it's like him experiencing life again, yeah. even though it's through you know Klaus. But right. you know he gets to feel all those things. You know when they were doing like the snow angels in the dirt. Mm-hmm. Him and a girl. Yeah. So we've got some quotes here. Yeah. I have one. The handler saying, you know you're really filling out those little shorts of yours <laughs> to five. It was a bit creepy and funny at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when when Klaus and Ben are having their conversation, uh, Klaus says, I so rarely listen to you. And then you already mentioned that we need to talk about the ground rules. I thought that was great. Yeah. Next up would be Lila saying, I love that shit Muppet. When Lila sees his, you know, Elliot's dead body, and when they pan over the body, Elliot's toenails had a light green nail polish on them. It huh. shows how eccentric that Elliot was. Apparently, Lila knew based on that aspect alone. Yeah, I didn't even catch that any any time I, I watched the episode. I must have blinked or something, but uh, that's a good good catch there. I loved when, when Ben was as Klaus and he asked Jill if he can smell her hair. He says, can I smell your hair? Just another one of those weird <laughs> kind of things. That is true. The last one I would have would be Klaus saying, Oh, my God, we're back again. <laughs> we're going to show you the way. Backstreet Boys plays after one of his followers asks one last departing news. Yeah. You know, what do you what inf- you know, what could you give to us before you leave? And the montage with Allison fighting with the Swedes during the Backstreet Boys or Backstreet's back. Yeah. And Klaus is uh, battling Ben with his body at the same time as he's heading towards Luther and yeah. Five down the alley. Yeah, and I talked about it a little bit earlier. My last one is just when Five is talking to Vanya and she wants to to bring Sissy and Harlan to the future. Five says no one is insignificant. And I just I, I picked up this last time watching it or one of the last times watching it that, that that's been kind of a theme throughout this uh, season really is that everyone has something. Everyone matters. Everyone means something uh, and everyone can make a difference. I thought that was really, really cool. And I picked up on that, uh, that it's been five and and Diego are both been the ones who've been like, no, no one's insignificant. We're everyone's important and, and all that. But yet you have Luther saying, Oh, nobody likes me and I'm a horrible person. And, but so I really like that, that uh, this is kind of a theme and I, I wonder if it's going to play out the rest of the season or if it's just kind of a one-off kind of thing. I hope it plays out. That would be a good thing. Yeah. So we had some feedback for this episode. Do you want me to go ahead and read it? Sure. This is from our, our good friend Daphne. She says, hey, Mark and Steve, I am loving your coverage of Umbrella Academy and look forward to following it through to the end of the season. R.I.P. Elliot. I'm still bummed that he is gone and was happy to see that thanks to Allison, we're down to just one Swede. Though sad, <laughs> Ray didn't return Allison's I love you. I was glad he decided he'd go back to the future with her. Yeah, I don't know if he had decided that or not, but it doesn't matter now. So Freaky Carl has got to go. His hoof and mouth disease story to Vanya might have been scary if he was telling it to anyone else. I feel for Sissy that her husband is willing to use their son against her. She says, "I." this is Daphne continues. I was laughing at Luther and Diego trying to look up Oga for Oga in the phone book was hilarious. Uh, us, us too, Daphne. Uh, 
Looking forward to episode eight already, and this is the first time I've gone week to week with a show that dropped all at once. We're on the home stretch. Thank you so much, Daphne. I appreciate the fact that you're going week to week with us as uh, Strange Indeed is doing that as well. I'm doing that. Mark has bad memory, but he he kind of went rogue <laughs> on us. But he's got a bad memory. He doesn't remember what happened in the last three episodes. So I can't remember yesterday. What did I do yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I do appreciate Daphne. I want you to know that you are following with us week to week and not uh, not jumping ahead yeah definitely and it's awesome that people are doing that and it's one thing that it's pretty cool if you do that with a podcast just like strange indeed does and rima sticks to that rule of i have to watch it one episode at a time yeah and i, I just love that aspect of them and we have a little bit of news and apparently the walking dead season 11 is going to be the official end of the main show by 2021 or 2022 depending on how they film and there will be a daryl and carol spinoff show that will come out either late 2022 or 2023 so uh yeah it, this show actually brought steve and i together because we met through walking dead casts on podcast the podcast network work and we uh you know we went to the jason and karen's patreon and then that's how we met and we've met in life he stayed at my house for uh, in december once and yeah. with a bunch of other zed heads from that group and you know and that's how i was able to have him on my podcast and that's why he's a co-host and on top of that you know we've made a lot of friends and now this is the end of a show that we all became friends on but there are other things that we could actually talk about because we are a still a great knit group and I, I i love it and there are other things that we all have in common too regarding these shows and other interests and it's fun to do but the fact that the actual main show itself is leaving i don't know really what's in store for fear of the walking dead and we know that the other spinoff show that's coming out and i think it's in october as well just after the season 10 finale comes out that's only for like two seasons at limited maybe 10 episodes per something like that yeah that's what i've heard i think there's it's yeah. two 10 episode seasons so this is an end of an era but you know like i stated before for last week for comic news you know you could actually go back and reread the actual comic if you want because they're releasing it in october in color format so that that's interesting for that but the fact that you know this show has been on for over 10 years now if you think about it and you know that's a that's a long stretch for a show and other shows have gone longer you know it, obviously the walking dead was not going to be like the simpsons where they could do <laughs> over 30 seasons you know right right but yeah <laughs> but, no it, it is and the the last the last two seasons especially season 9 and season 10 have been excellent i know a lot of people dropped off with the Negan years, that was just that Negan war. Or those two years, those two just seasons, just dragged. It, it dragged it on dragged. and on, and so people jumped yeah. out of the jumped off the the show. But uh, now it's it's back and it's uh, doing great. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of season ten and then see what they do uh, to to close it out. I I appreciate any show that is able to kind of go out on top. I think that's there's so few shows that are able to do that. I mean, I think like Breaking Bad is is one that got to kind of go out on top mash of course 30 40 years ago it got mm -hmm. to go out on top supernatural supernatural i think is 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 going out uh on, you know fairly good ratings they've, they've been the the top cw show for quite a while now and yeah so it's it's uh it's going to end with its with this 15th season in fact if you're if you follow any of those actors social media you'll know that they have just wrapped filming on the the final episode and i saw on uh, jensen ackles inst i think it was on his instagram feed that he showed that he said every season every script he ever had for the last 15 years has ended with to be continued and he showed up the, the end on the bottom of the the last script that he had so wow definitely end of an era i have watched supernatural since the beginning and i'm looking forward to when they start airing their last episodes as well so yeah, it's an end of an era, but thank goodness that The Walking Dead hopefully will end on a high note because it made a comeback after, like you stated before, the Negan years. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. 
Yeah, something that I and Jason Gabassi actually talked about on a messenger once, saying that it, it should literally be only about eight episodes at most, and they dragged that out, and that that was the only drawback to that show during that time. Yeah, you know, it it was just like, oh, let's get keep stretching it out, but they made a comeback with season nine, even though we lost Rick within that season. And I'm pretty sure with the other characters, they'll do a lot more. I wouldn't be surprised that we do lose a few characters, but obviously, you know, Carol and Daryl, we already know they got. I was going to say they kind of spoil, they kind of spoil it there that uh, that Carol and Daryl are going to survive. I think that's kind of bad that they. I mean, I understand why they wanted to make that announcement because they want to make sure they keep fans, uh, oh, you know, interested. But at the same time, it kind of kind of spoils it for, uh, uh, for it. So. Yeah, and also the the Walking Dead rewards. I don't know if a lot of you who are fans of the show of the Walking Dead, the Walking Dead fan rewards is ending by October. So whatever points that you have, you should really utilize now, because that's going to go away completely. Yeah. So that was like that was the beginning of the decline, to me when I started seeing things going away. So. Use those points. If you have a ton, I have a ton. I should get start downloading wallpapers and things of that nature just for fun because, you know, without it, you can't get those things. So use those rewards points and keep watching The Walking Dead. It's coming back. We only have another, wow, it's coming back in the beginning of October, I think. So we got a few weeks going until we actually see it come back. So watch out for that. All right. Sounds good. So we got yeah. some podcast recommendations here. I I just listened to this week's Inside of You podcast with R- Michael Rosenbaum. He interviewed Jensen Ackles. Oh, cool. And uh, uh, as I've already stated, I'm a huge Supernatural fan. I uh, can't wait to see. Uh, if, I hope this isn't a spoiler for anybody because it's been all over social media as well that Jensen <laughs> Ackles is going to be in season three of The Boys. And uh, he in this interview, he doesn't mention that at all, though. So I'm assuming this interview was done before that announcement became official because he doesn't say anything about the boys in it. But he does mention that he's up in Vancouver during his 14 day quarantine that the Canadian government is uh, is making them do before they can leave their house. So uh, next oh. week, Michael Rosenbaum will be interviewing Jared Padalecki. So that'll be kind of cool. So look out for those two podcasts. Definitely. And I love Mike Rosenbaum because he goes really deep. It becomes more of a personal podcast if you think about it when he yeah. goes into like talking about certain It's things. really good. I, I enjoyed it and I'm glad I got you hooked on it. Mm. <laughs> My recommendations would be TV podcast industries with their coverage of Lovecraft Country. Keep following them. Yeah, I, be- I believe it's – I think I said this last week, but that's coming out on both the Dreadful – uh, podcast feed and TV podcast industries feed. So depending on, I keep getting it multiple times because I'm subscribed to both. So uh, maybe I've got to unsubscribe to one of them, but yeah, it's not a big eh, deal. Yeah, both. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up would be Run for Your Lives with Daphne and Paik on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Yes, that would be my network, uh, of course. And I'll state it again Panels the Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network. So. But they have their episode, their third episode out now, which is, and they cover Jurassic Park. Hold and on to your butts. I sent feedback and you sent feedback. As I well. did. I did. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could hear us there. <laughs> For YouTube recommendations, uh, as always, I always recommend the Grim Life Collective with Michael and Jessica with their Up All Night with the Grims. A movie watch with people on their YouTube channel as you watch a movie that is on YouTube and you could converse with them with another media device. So check them out. John Campia on the John Campia show, which as well is pretty much an interactive YouTube because he discusses the news of film and pop culture. It's very interactive. His show is available live daily, so he's usually prompt 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending. It might be delayed. Who knows? Uh, He has Robert Meyer Burnett, at times, who created the movie Free Enterprise back in 1998, and he's been a producer. He actually did some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff for the Lord of the Rings movies, like the documentaries or the mini docs that they did. The 1998 Free Enterprise movies about Trekkers, you know, it's actually a story long movie, but it's pretty cool. It's a funny film. And as well, he also has actress Erin Cummings, who you've seen 
and Lucifer and a few other shows too. And as always, we wrap up with letting you know where you can send us your feedback. You can hear this podcast if you're hearing it on now. You can hear it on various <laughs> podcast players, whichever podcast player is your choice. We're on just about all of them out there now, I think. We also have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. Also, you can submit feedback on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can e shoot us an email, as Daphne did, to our email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can call us and leave a voice message at 845 350 2095. That's 845 350 2095. We are also on YouTube and you can hear us there. You can subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, help us out with ratings and reviews. We'd love it. You can send us feedback on any of the episodes of Umbrella Academy Season 2. We do ask that if you send us uh, for a, a episode we haven't covered yet, just make sure you put it up there in the subject line because I don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, get... I'll be spoiled too. Because yeah, because your haven't... memory. Yeah, um, yeah, I suck. But, but just let us know what <laughs> uh, what uh, episode you're sending us feedback on, and that way we can make sure we don't get spoiled if we haven't seen the episode yet. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be found right here on Panels and Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. You can also hear me on a new podcast that will be releasing in a couple of weeks called Adrenaline Cinema and that can be found on my network called the Pyrocore Entertainment Network and the podcast will be about those action adventure films, pure action films and anything to do with what gets your adrenaline going while watching an, an action movie, you know all those adventure films and like I stated before, Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network stay tuned here and we will keep you up to date. Or just check out Pyrocore Entertainment's website. And that's Pirate and Core is spelled out C O R P S Entertainment.com. And if you have an not understanding of what Pirate Core was named after, I recommend you uh, look for an old comic book. Because uh, I kind of got that from my friend Evan Dorkin, who had a uh, comic book called Pirate Core. And it the core, it was C-O-R-P, and the S was with the dollar sign because it was a futuristic pirate company. <laughs> but uh, if you can even find that comic. So if you guys do, I, I have like two copies of each issue, and they only put out three. So <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> All right. And you? Oh, I send voicemails to lots of other podcasts. You can hear my voice just on, on, you know, I pop up on different podcasts all the time. I'm, I'm going to stay right here on Panels to Pixels. I may pop in on, on Mark's podcast. I may pop, pop up on Daphne and Pakes. You know, I, uh, people apparently like to hear my opinions, so I appreciate right. that. We like to cross the streams. <laughs> Unlike what, uh, you know, who was it in Ghostbusters said, don't cross the streams. <laughs> well, we're going to cross the streams. We're going to do that. Who cares? Yeah. We like to have fun, and we love to podcast. So. Exactly. So, well, that was our show this evening. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>